Oh, I pressed the buttons in the wrong order. Oh well. I guess I'm live. Whoopsie. Um, <laughs> screen manager, quickly. <laughs> Shit. Part 18. Revive. Beat us. Dun, 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 dun. We should be good. Let me just take a wee sip. If a uh, long time no speak. Ah, I was on mute. Hi. Um, where are we at? Straight in. The Oral Eater. Where is it? Those are the extremes. Uh, that one. Ciao. Five minutes. Can't wait to see how many people leave as soon as I zone in. Anticlimactic. <coughs> Straight into killing Leviabetus anyway. You might just go murder it for us. Cool. Yeah, that works better. Invite, invite to party. Invite, invite to party. Fuck okay. it. I literally don't care about Leviathan. I've done him synced once, that's all I ever need to do. In fact, I've done him synced once on Extreme. Because I'm an idiot and cured for Extreme. That was a healer. Cutscene time! Meanwhile, I shall sip some and brew from a bottle. I don't like bottles, but I have one.
<laughs> well then. Good fuck, you big snake. Oh, die quietly. when I get the bottle up to do it. Because I'll probably want to go back to Mail Vieira for Shadow Bringers. Lord of the World. Extremely did Hold on, see while you're there, Beef. Can I take off this stupid extreme Garuda? Ah, okay, cool. I will do some questage then until such a point. Go, go poop first, just let us know when you're back. Oh, okay. See, even the lore that she's the most violent of all the primals as well. She's just the fucking coolest. She's fucking scary. Wind Booba. <laughs> the return of the Y Boulder. Efforts to augment Gurudu's powers were met with predicted success. It was mildly unsatisfying that the Primal was thus summarily defeated. <sighs> Against the bringing of light, it appears a heavier hand is required. I know the f that the focus has been discovered. It is of no consequence, even should they understand the significance of its presence, they have no means to prevent the summonings. The Beastmen continue to create even more powerful avatars every time their gods fall. Link forged in this chain of ambition, the shackles of chaos are bound even tighter. It's not for us to entertain such speculation. We are bid only to convey what we have witnessed. It'll be gone from here. Sweet! Oh, 
save this first because that should actually lead to other extremes being unlocked. There as well. How the fuck do you do that? Mm. All that fancy parkour and for what I tell you, what? To make fuckers like me jealous, I guess, but that's not the point. <sighs> Hello. Once more, Garuda has fallen to your might. You have graduate. You are blessed to count in such heroes among our allies. What's this? Some momentum of battle may have. Uh, what an uncanny arrangement of bone. I've never seen its like. I cannot guess what foul ritual this object would be used. Maybe some connection to the primal, considering the place in which it was found. I must ask that you take this grizzly trophy to the Waking Sands and consult with Urianji. Perhaps he can provide some insight. Pray return to the Waking Sands. I'll do this and I'll go back to Limsa. Because it's me. I can't just go the straight direction. I have to get distracted. I'm fucking ridiculous. Even when I catch myself doing it, I go, oh, well, I can just do this one wee distraction. Will ye? Aye. Fuck me, man. What the fuck is that name? From the grilling trial, half battle with a lady gift and the police that she made a bit of it. What's your focus of exactly bone? Yeah, I know, I know. Does there have primal materials that I made to give us to this one? No, but I, I have a couple of feathers on. Jam, actually, I could probably give you, but. You know, sent word of Mount Shake and Tremor felt by the man and beast in the Beast of Fell Brands. Go bold to awaken Lord of the Crags. That's the one. Meow. 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 I have primal materials that would be given to this one. I do not. I do not. I definitely do not. I've got. I've got Two feathers of Garuda on Jow, and that's pretty much all we'll get you. But should be easy enough. <laughs> what did I eat? <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking forward to adding a kebab today. Something's gonna shake loose. Lieutenant Dyna, I'm glad to see you answered our desperate summons. As you've no doubt heard, the kobolds have, it seems, yet again called their fourth primal titan with their mountain abode, within their mountain abode. The recent quaking of land can be attributed to no other, and considering the intensity of the tremor, we can be sure that Urianji's warning concerning the enhanced power of the primals are far from idle. We maelstrom officers would, of course, like not better than to shatter the belligerent old boulder ourselves, but we cannot risk losing our soldiers to tempering. Once again, we must Turn to seasoned veterans of the silence. According to our readings, the rumblings are strongest in the naval. Titan's usual haunt within Ungamaro Gains. Uh, blah, 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 that one. Mines. You should be able to enter the Primus Domain by reattuning to the basement. Yep, 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 yep. Do the same thing you did last time, but this time for Titan. This time for Titan. Titan. La la la. While you're evacuating the premises, I'll continue on with MSQ. As soon as you're back, we can just slap tight a couple of times and I'll continue with the MSQ. In fact, you know what? There's probably not much bother doing these extremes in it. I'm probably as well waiting until I've got all of them unlocked. You know what I mean? If I wait until I've got them all unlocked, I can just slap them all at once. Ooh. 
because there's plans that I've not even seen the hard mode of, you know what I mean? So I'm as well just waiting. Yeah, I've talked myself into that now. They are one at a time, yeah, but like going through the quest line all at once because they're all tied together. And I've still got two primals that I've not even seen the normal versions of. You know, Ramu and Shiva. I've not even been to the storyline to know that they exist yet. Um, which one this way? Do I have a title? Minsons are sworn to strive till sea swallows all, and swallow all it would have had Leviathan prevailed. That we still strive now, we owe in no small part to you. Not for the first time, you have delivered Limsolo Minsa from the wrath of a primal. Never has our nation known a stouter ally. On behalf of my people, I give you my humblest thanks. Tis meet that I give thanks to old Mistbeard, too, for his fine solution. Whatever else he may have been, tis clear he was a resourceful soul. Would that I had a man like him in my service. Before I set foot in these lands, I had no inkling that the people of Eorzea contended with such mighty foes. Suffice it to say, their existence came as something of a shock, as did the idea that they could be defeated. This experience has served to remind me of the vastness of the world, and the boundless potential of man. Though I am but a refugee in this realm, I would fain be of use to you in your fight. Know that I am tutored in one of the foremost combat arts of the Far East. It may seem outlandish to the Eorzean eye, but should any of your people care to learn, I would be pleased to initiate them. And I will see to it that they are grateful. I have no doubt that your knowledge and skills will serve us well. Besides, your art is not so outlandish as you think. Would you not agree, Master Thancre? Not escapes your searching eye, Admiral. Few are privy to this information, but Limsa Lominsa is home to a certain secret fraternity. Its members are trained in a form of combat not unlike your own. Bastard, I should have unlocked the rogue to see if I get any special dialogue from this. By my judgment, should not be beyond such individuals to adapt to the techniques I witnessed you employing with such admirable deftness. I am heartened to hear this. I too noted a kinship between your style and mine own, though it seemed to me that you fought differently in the beginning. Uh, I, I suppose I did. What can I say? I'm a man of many talents. Though you may labor to believe it, Thancred was once something of a scoundrel who fraternized with the criminal class in these parts. You stole her! You jest, of course. But for a chance encounter with Alfino's grandsire, he might never have left Limsa Lominsa, or received an education in Charlian, or taken up his post in Uldar, which is where he trained in the Blade, lest you wonder. Does that technically mean he was trained like a paladin as well? Because he's trained with one-handed swords, that's what it translated really well to the gunbreaker style, right? 
So technically, could he wield the arms of a paladin? Eh, stop thinking too much about stuff it doesn't need to be thinking about. <laughs> it would seem there is more to you than meets the eye, Master Thancred. Lady Yugiri, I am told that you and yours came to Eorzea seeking permanent resettlement and that many domains have since been engaged as frontier hands at Revenant's Toll. Mordona is many things, but a place of refuge it is not. Know that I would like nothing better than to furnish your people with a new home here on Lominson soil. Alas, wrapped by instability as we are, our nation is in no fit state to take you in. Yeah, I know, I know, he's, I know about that, but it's, it's just like, the right hand, the actual sword hand, he could use all of the sword arts, just none of the other bits, you know what I mean? Because if they're, they're going by that, it would at very least be gladiatorial combat he was trained in. If he was trained by the sword, and if he was trained like, to fight in all that, that's where his one-handed sword art would have came from. I'd stop thinking about geeky shit that doesn't matter, Brian, you fucking fool. Get on, mate. Yet I'll not have it said that we turned a blind eye to your suffering. Until such time as we can do more, I pledge to send provisions. We are in your debt, Admiral. I realize that it scarce qualifies as repayment. But if it please you, I shall set about sharing my martial knowledge with your people at once. You wished a word in private. The better not to spoil the festive mood. History repeats itself, Admiral. As the kobolds did before them, the Sahagin resorted to summoning their god over a territorial feud. They acted in self-preservation. It may be that the Sahagin initiated this particular clash, but how it begins does not interest me so much as how it ends. I have not forgotten our conversation, Yashtola. I am aware that man bears part of the blame for the primal's existence. Nor am I ignorant of the Sahagin's reason for acting. They sought to secure a place to breed and multiply that their kind might survive. Self-preservation, as you say. But we have as much right to live and thrive as they. If our own survival is threatened, are we to lay down our arms and welcome oblivion? Nay. And so you kill, that you might live. Yet if living is a right, then that right belongs to all peoples, be they men or beastmen. I'll not deny your reasoning, but when a storm gathers, it falls to me to see my people safely through it. That is my duty, and I shall do it. As must we all, Admiral. Stay the course then, but know that it will lead to no good end. Man has ever put himself first and foremost. To justify his actions, he clads himself in the armor of righteousness, though it be a fancy of his own making. In this, mayhap the Garleans and we Domans are not so different. Eorzea has become as a raging sea. If we are to keep our heads above the waves, we cannot scruple to drown the man next to us. When hopes of coexistence founder, strength must determine who has the greater right to live.
I was talking while on mute. Fuck's sake, Brian. The Admiral has informed me of an arrangement. I have in my keeping a letter of introduction to Lady Re for Lady Yugiri. So stands a gate leading to the pier of small fishing vessels. Look for the... Yeah, I know. I know, I know where the rogue skill is. Feck off. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I know about them rogues. I forgot I'd help it. No, I don't want to join the Rogue's Guild. I realise I'm being stupid here. Alright, I, I noticed that the quest is up there. Uh, that, was, that was my bad. That was my bad for not paying attention. Sweet. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, buddy. God, what did I say? I, was, I said stuff when I was on mute, like a fucking Egypt. Well, whatever. You don't gonna need to rebuy a Fantasia for when I hit Shadow Ringers though, right? But for now, ephemeral. Cancel and access the subcommand menu to re-edit your character. This one? What? You wish you can edit your character's race, sex, and appearance. Log in or cancel and access subcommand menu to re-edit your character. This is subcommand. This is the first time I've done this. Okay, whatever, proceed, fuck off. Sure, do what you want. That's just that. Hey, what am I doing? Right click. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> okay, um, save appearance data. Sure. Dirt. And a Reddit character. Yes. No. Okay. Femro time. See if I can make it a slightly mm. Appearance! Um. Shoop. 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 Is there only four faces? First hairstyle jam had. I had that hairstyle for ages before I think it was you who helped me unlock the bloody barber. Oh, I could go for 
for the mullet. That'd be hilarious. No. I really love this music, do you know that? Go for the sombra look. That's close in the colour that I had on Dermot. Jaw. Sure. Eye shape. Huh? Suspicious. Suspicious. I have no idea which one of them would look normal. Okay. Is that the one I was on? You know, I just can't even tell. Whatever. I can't tell the difference, man. Mouth. facial feature. Was that voice? Sure. Whatever. Ugh. I'm going to regret just calling it. Sweet. 
That's the first time I've used the Flantasia. The minute I hit Shadowbringers though, going straight back to Bunny Boy. But for now, I like being able to wear hats. worth using my only Fantasia. Oh, poof, ah, jump scare by small dancing dragon. Get my god, I am big. <laughs> oh, 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 Lord, watch out. The ground shakes when I backflip. with me, Ventra! Oh no, I don't need to speak pirate. So you're the woman Admiral sent word of. Man, word spreads fast. I was hoping I might catch a glimpse of Thanker too. Been a while since I saw that shite grin. But what with all the doe-eyed wenches about, I suspect he's got his hands full. Damn, I am so fucking dumb. Do you know, all of Dermot's height originally was just on the ears, so I was able to see his head height not being that very tall compared to the rest of them. So just getting this is mwah, 10 out of 10. You must be the Far Easterner. Merlin says wants to train with us. Welcome to Lunsam. I am your Giri of Dona. Doma. It is an honour to make your acquaintance. I must confess, when I first learned of your organisation, I had certain preconceptions as to the nature of your membership. It would seem I was mistaken. First person to sell us, Limps is a city of pirates, to be sure, and pirates don't give two felts but keep in a spotless reputation. Hardly need a secret society to do their work. It might be as my people and I keep to the shadows, but we've got nothing to be ashamed of. Simply better for business if we remain unseen. And so you have developed fighting techniques suited to those suited to this purpose. I see. Know that the practitioners of my art too are denizens of shadow. It is in stealth that our strength lies. There's much you might learn from one another, I think. What in seven L's are you waiting for? If you'd come with us to... If you'd come with us, Yuguri of Do What's It? We can get acquainted more private surrounds. Uh, that didn't come out right, did it? Lady Dermot, I shall with all... That's so weird. I maybe should have renamed her. Whatever. I shall remain with these people for a time, that I might study their ways. Do you know what, I'll call her by her second name whenever I see Dermot now. Dina sounds kind of feminine. Though I am loath to be separated from my countrymen, I take solace in the knowledge that they are in the best of hands. You have been a true friend to us, Domans. No words would suffice to express my gratitude. Ere long, I hope to begin imparting my martial knowledge to the people of Eorzea. When that time comes, it would be my honour to welcome you as a student. Big powerful wall man. Big shiny helmet. Let me keep my visor up so I can really see my face. Much more has occurred since I first beheld Eorzea from the Galleon's deck. Suffice it to say, I did not envision being invited to play part in your noble struggle. But forgive me, I kept you over long, but doubtless you have pressing businesses of your own. Rest assured, I no longer require an escort in this land. The next you meet Lady Linfilia, previously her my humblest thanks. Not that I can do so in person, but I must needs fulfil my promise to the Admiral. Till we meet again, warrior of light. To the rise of the stone. 
I return to the rising stars. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. The fuck the fucking size but <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Look, there's another rogue Aiden. Die! Oh, well, no, actually, he's running about the same size as me. Still. Damn! <laughs> your mother. Could you stop chatting her up? <laughs> I forgot to look at the point. Look. Hmm, a door. It's down there. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have too much fun with this. <laughs> oh, Leviabetes got to me. share my conclusions with you. Please, bear with me. Grr. When the Sahagin Elder summoned Leviathan, he employed the power we have come to know as the Echo. Though I cannot well explain the how of it, it would seem he became immortal in so doing. When the Admiral subsequently slew him, his spirit emerged from his lifeless flesh, a consciousness shorn of physical form. Thus transfigured, he took up residence in the body of his minion with the ease of a man donning a favorite glove. Long have I known that the Echo allows one to pass through the walls of a man's soul, but never did I imagine that it could free us from our own flesh, nor less that our souls could then occupy the next corporeal vessel to take our fancy. It was of this that Elidibus spoke, an existence which knows neither cessation nor oblivion. And yet, Though the Sahagin had mastered his gift and thereby become immortal, he was by no means invulnerable. As we both bore witness, he was ultimately absorbed into Leviathan. And the import of this observation? If the Asian's mode of existence is indeed the same, it can be inferred that they too are not invulnerable, that they can be destroyed. There exists a legend which tells of souls who are reborn upon the cusp of each umbral calamity, that they might stay the encroaching darkness. To most, it is but a fairy tale. Yet recent events have given me cause to wonder, could the legend in fact refer to the Echo? Much and more yet remains unknown, but I am confident that all will become clear in time. For the present, however, what matters is that the key to defeating the Asians may at last be within sight. With Orianger's aid, it is my hope that I shall fathom this matter ere long. Oh, I was just about to send for you, my friend. Is Otimus? Grave tidings from the Charlian motherland, my lady. It doth concern our distant allies, the students of Valdesian. What of them? My lady, the Isle of Val, which for many years hath been the Order's home, is no more. No more? Whatever do you mean? I relate only that which hath been conveyed unto me by our agents. An etheric wave of the highest magnitude was recorded in the region. Soon thereafter, it was observed that the Isle had ceased to be. Tis postulated that a magic was evoked, likened power to Ultima. Twelve preserve. If there are no other matters, I move that today's meeting be adjourned.
It is done, my lord. I... <clears throat> forgive my impertinence, my lord, but these orders... I am uncertain as to what end they serve. Revolution. Old friends, the very ale itself. Everyone and everything. No, no, it will us not to speculate. Marianne will send word if there are any developments until such a time as he does. You must remain firmly focused on what the witch is within our power to change. With that in mind, I would speak of a different matter. One closer to home. <coughs> Concerns fl ether etheric fluctuations which we had previously attributed to good King Mogamog. The king is no more. That the king no is no more is a blessing of which we have you to thank. Yet not. Yet all is not well in the Twelveswood. Our latest readings reveal an ongoing etheric disturbance of considerable magnitude. <sighs> they may even suggest the presence of a primal. Needless to say, the mere possibility warrants immediate investigation, and I would have you. Asila? I don't wish to interrupt, but we have a problem. What manner of problem? Band of refugees hailing from Ulda this time. They come to Reverend Stoll seeking asylum. Seem they expect us to afford the same treatment we gave the Domans. At present, they are in seventh heaven, waiting for more response. I see, we have this to be expected. I shall meet with them at once. Nasilia, you know full well we have the resources to accommodate many more people. Consider what will happen if you do this. Word will spread, more will follow. Your opinion is due to note that I will hear their suit. I should be grateful of your presence in this meeting. Nothing helps you say no like a giant woman. Wait, 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 wait. hang on, can I? Oh, I can't. Just for keeping you waiting, my name is Benfilia and I'll be the silence of the seventh dawn. To be praised it is you. We are ready and willing to work the same as Domans. Just give us a task and we'll see it done. Pray calm yourselves. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I know not of your situation. Beg your pardon, Distant. I I ain't so good with words. We've been living off the scraps of Ulda for years now, trying to piece life together to replace the one that God took. They say there's work, but there's not for an honest man. Not as would sully his soul sooner than his palms, any road. The flames do what they can, for us, of course, but it ain't near enough. It's only getting worse. When the calamity brought us to our knees, those rich bastards in the city didn't help us up. They climbed on our backs. I don't pretend to be clever, but I can see what's coming. I knew we had to run. The only question was when, where. And they came to me, Reverend Stoll. I mean, you took them foreigners in, didn't you? Surely you'd do the same for us. <coughs> I feel the situation is rather more complicated. Well, it's true we accepted the Doma Doma Domans' petition for aid. That decision was a product of extraordinary circumstances. I sympathise deeply with your pride. But pray understand it is not possible for an organisation of our means to aid all who have been affected by the calamity. So it's worth Great regret, I must deny your request. Could know where else to go to. You're turning your back on us. If I might have a word. That old. Help tidings from Ulda. Alvaro has been wounded. What? How? 
Kenneth for certain. But I fear it might be. According to the flames, the refugees started a riot. They went wild, apparently, lashing out at any and everyone. That can't be right. Why would they? They must have been provoked. The demonstration was meant to be peaceful. Seven hells. Now the blades will have an excuse. They'll round us up and kill anyone who tries to resist. And doesn't please. If you want to help us build a new life, at least help us keep the ones we've got. Not the ones to stand idly and watch innocents suffer. However, until we know more of the circumstances surrounding this riot, I am not certain what aid, if any, we can provide. If the authorities determine the refugees attacked without provocation, then those responsible will have to answer for their actions. How can you be so blind? Fine, Alphano, and quickly, if he's in danger or worse, I would have you and none other by his side. Thank you. Pray do not concern yourself with the matter we were discussing earlier. Ida and Papalimo will see to it. Afno has been treated in Everglass. Hurry. Hurry, 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 hurry. Stop talking then! Let's go da. There's always something really funny and juxtaposed about going for the pure serious tense shits going down music to like that pure lounge jazz that you get in the Rising Stones. What up? Jesus! Death by snow, snow. You must have gathered by now that Tataru is given to exaggeration. As you can see, I am quite well. Ulda, on the other hand, is not. This riot was anything but an isolated incident. There is a restlessness in the air. Tensions long simmering are at last threatening to boil over. Ulda is a nation infamous for the great disparity between the wealthy and the poor. The majority of the populace accepts this state of affairs because they believe that every man bears responsibility for his own lot in life. To an Uldan, money is the foremost, and some would say the only measure of a man's worth. Small wonder that the wealthiest wield the greatest influence. Fuck, how long have I been on mute? So where do the refugees fit into this social hierarchy? What place is there for those who fled Alamigo and the destroy? Plainly, there is none. They have no wealth, no power, and no worth. To the Uldan way of thinking, they may as well not exist. If only that guy's haircut didn't they exist. Choosing to ignore their existence, however, is patently not an option. General Rauban and the Sultana understand this, which is why they ordered the immortal flames to provide the refugees aid and succor. Yet, none would dispute that the expenses incurred by this policy grow by the day, with no end in sight. This has prompted more and more Uldans to question their obligation to aid these worthless wanderers. While more and more refugees have come to resent their treatment at the hands of the sneering citizenry. The manner of Lord Lodorito's refusal to grant the Dolmen's asylum bespoke a disdain for all refugees, an attitude shared by the rest of the monetarists. And you may be sure they make no effort to conceal their opinions. It was only a matter of time before the refugees united in protest. Nor is it any surprise that some among them would ultimately resort to violence. <sighs> that the immortal flames should choose this of all occasions to engage in joint training exercises with the other grand companies. By the time they return, the situation may well have deteriorated beyond mending. Is 
I told you before, it was all but inevitable the incident of, that an incident of this kind would eventually occur, given the rising tensions with the Sultanate. Nevertheless, I have reason to believe that this particular riot may not have began spontaneously. Have I piqued your curiosity? Good. You accompanied to the Hall of Flames. I would hear what General Raban has to say in the matter. Yeah, you could have summarised that entire sentence into about three. Go see Rauban. Sweet. Because I'm not going to be the one that's talking. You could have just said, Bone, let's go. There we go. Here, another three way you could have summarised it. Where are we going? Going to see Rauban. Sweet. There, another three. <laughs> Stupid. Press him. Piddly word. Elf. Man, I really am a dwarf, aren't I? It's not a good time there. I am taller than Rauban, what the fuck? <laughs> I've not been this tall in this game ever. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. I didn't know it was possible. Cheese beats. Anyway. <laughs> Press of the matter we wish to discuss. Alphano, back in your feet already. Credit my swift recovery to your charge and th Memories of the riot are still somewhat muddled. I'm sure she managed to regain control of the situation. Not entirely. We've secured the city soon enough, but not before unrest has spread to the surrounding territories. Pockets of resistance remain throughout Thanalan. Sent what forces we can spare to rout out the last of the belligerents, but progress is slow and damnably elusive. I can well imagine. Given the majority of the refugees live outside the walls, stands the reason they would know the lay of the land. What I don't understand is how they came to be so well prepared. Before my little accident, I observed several of the refugees were armed, and not with butcher knives or pitchforks, but with martial weaponry. I need hardly add that such equipment is costly. None can deny the tension between Ildan and the set Ildan citizenry and refugee population have increased since the domains were turned away. But would that not motivate a starving man to purchase arms and live food? I think not. And what of those who have not even a single guilt to spend? Who could not survive without aid provided by the immortal flames? Surely they would sooner sell a weapon than bring it to bear against their benefactors. Come to the point. I think he's made it. My point is, General, is that this power ke powder keg of discontent was not set alight by chance, these events were deliberately set into motion. And now order must be restored. That's my first tray. Until it's done, any investigation can wait. I don't have time to discuss this. My scouts are returning soon. General's no fool. He keeps his own counsel and with good cause. Were he to claim, without necessary proof, these riots were instigated by outside forces, the monetarist would accuse him of attempting to shirk responsibility. And after all, he and the Sultana have been most outspoken proponents of refugee aid. Regardless, they will face harsh criticism in the, criticism in the days ahead. Our allies may stumble upon a truth in time, but I have more faith in your abilities. Therefore, propose we conduct our own investigation, independent of the authorities. To that end, I would have you make inquiries, am I on me? Good, I'm not. I would have you make inquiries in the settlement suspected of harboring, harboring belligerents. Commander Smith will know where they are. You may balk at the request for such information, but I have no doubt you can persuade them with your silver tongue. I don't really speak, Alphano. You, you know this, right? You literally speak entire novels of text at me where I go, mm, or, uh -uh. Uh, whatever. Meanwhile, I shall seek my answers my own way, which we can regroup and share findings. Whatever, little man. Hi. Just, there's a door, you know. You don't have to run through the fucking window. It's rude. So rude. Hi, beef. Burp. Oh my god, wait! My weapon glows. God, that is such a cool spear, though. Ugh. Ugh. I love the man never weapon so much, man. Look as though you had something to say. 
to ask is no simple favour for such information to fall into wrong hands. The lives of countless soldiers would be at risk. Even so, there is wisdom in your words. An able individual may be better suited to the task than a regiment. Very well. Brass blades have reported suspicious activity in the vicinity of Lost Hope. Wow, that's quite the name. It may be unrelated to recent events, but we doubt it. The suggestion begins speaking to the blades posted there. Alright. Where's, where's that thing? I don't know what that is. Oh, alright, okay. Just didn't forget a mix. Bye, beef. How, what is those, how do you get that emote, the pose emote? What is that? The only one I can do is that, and I've not got the one to take my, my ready my weapon. You need to buy that in the gold saucer, and I will only have the MGB for it. Oh my god, look at the size difference between... <laughs> I've never been a tall character in this game, ever. <laughs> it's actually kind of broken. <laughs> look at the fucking size of me on this thing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, I actually love it. Oh, my days. What brings you here, adventure? Search for refugees? Well, you come to the right place. I mean, those refugees. Oh, no. You won't find them here. Most of the people have lost hope have come to accept their situation and are content to pass their days in peace and quiet. Outsiders have trouble understanding that. Like that merchant who passed there recently. Gregarious fellow, but awfully opinionated. Can't say I was sad to see him go. Friend of the Sultanate Army. I take it this means someone has read my report. Refugees who left with the merchant have yet to return, and I'm increasingly concerned that Zazawaka's suspicion were correct. Yeah, no fog race what I'm talking about, do you? Never mind. Speak with Zazawaka, he'll explain everything. Sure, as long as you never, ever, ever say that name to me again. I could feed you up my butt. Don't hurt me! I'm not one of them! You're not a flame? I see. If Lothric bid you speak to me, I'll take it you've agreed to help. So I will be praised for that, because we haven't a moment to waste. Everyone knows the flames are on the march. The others have fallen under that fanatic spell, but not I. Promise of revolution and retribution on holding the ruling class to account and taking that which is owed. Ha! <laughs> Jolish fantasy. Everything I could to dissuade the others from leaving, but few would heed my words. Now that one of our idealists has returned, however, the madness of that merchant's plan was plain for all to see. Look behind yonder tent, and you will understand why. Even now, he babbles incoherently, so traumatized as he by the bloodshed he witnessed. Try as I might, I can make little sense of his words beyond the fact that. He was not alone in surviving, yet I have no doubt that the merchant will lead the remainder to their doom. I beg you, find him before he does. Oi, bullet. What are you doing? Don't, don't draw, don't draw, don't draw, don't draw! Why didn't you run away with me? We could have escaped together. Then you'd be here with me. Be here to soothe me. Why? Why didn't you stay? Okay, I'm going to draw my weapon at you. I'm just going if to... If, if I walk forward and you get poked, your fault for not moving. The chocobo? Right, well, I'll tell you what, I've got the draft chocobo. That's a bigger one. Oh my god, it's a unit! <laughs> oh my days! What the fuck, bro? <laughs> He's my boy! Let me get back on. <laughs> Draft chocobo is about the same height ish. Aye, aye. It's the same height as that. Where's my company chocobo? <laughs> right, I'm sorry, but I have to at least try. Oh my god, that's so fucking good! <laughs> oh, oh my 
head hurts. I'm trying not to laugh too loud because my dad's in bed. Oh, my freaking god, that's so good. <laughs> jam and just no he's he's a small cat boy that's what he is <sighs> i'm sweating you've, you've actually killed me by pointing that out oh sooth okay oh we're double dogging it god i am Mental. What amounts have I got in this character? I don't worry of many, but. And what do you want? Yeah, it's true. Fall dimension. May God strike me down for my folly. Where they will not give, you must take, he said. When we asked how, he'd reveal the cache of weapons he had brought and implored us to seize control of our fates. Thought about running then and there, but the others were so excited. He split us into two groups, set us off on our own, but then the flames found us. We didn't know what to do. Our leader tried to parley with theirs, but then they started arguing, then the fighting, and then everyone was fighting, and the flames were shouting. Shouting to give no quarter, and oh gods, the other group, they're still out there. If we don't stop them, they'll be massacred. <coughs> the other refugees are hiding in the caves south of Lost Hope, but to approach them would be fruitless. They would sooner call us agents of the Sultanate and try to kill us than they would listen to reason. Why, the twins might even be delighted to do the deed themselves. A box and all bloody cell swords. They were supposed to train us to fight, but the ones he sent with us vanished without a struggle. Well, if only we had never listened to that merchant's ridiculous claims, he said our cause was righteous, and that the gods would never suffer us to be defeated. Though, if they were forced to confront reality, that's it. Challenge the twins to combat and show my brethren that the strongest warriors are no match for one woman. Mayhap then they will agree to lay down their arms and renounce this plot. Or your entire body just blends in under my dog. Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for your name tag, you wouldn't have me there. Seven Hills, they found us. Everyone, grab your gear and make for the rendezvous point. Shut your hole. So that's your game, is it? <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, Max. We're more than willing to kill yourselves. I 
Where's my chocobo? We bastard stunned me. Everybody's now dead. You beat them like it was nothing. So almighty, what are we going to do now? Brethren, what of the twins? What happened? See, well, you had no choice. Better than a hand for them take a beating from you than they won't get butchered by the flames. Tell me, what did the merchant have to say when it was over? Huh? Where else would it be? Unless, unless he went to Stone's Throat to recruit others? Bruh, I hate to tell you, but he's probably ski and daddled. She wished they approached the refugees in Stone Throw, but now is waiting till the fl but was waiting until the flames withdrew their forces from the vicinity. Now that they have, there's nothing to stop him from continuing his work. Many more how many more must perish in pursuit of this futile cause? How much more suffering must be endured before it ends? Find him, convince him to cease his mad quest. Surely it will lead us to ruin. <sighs> Get under my dog. Visible girl and cat. Oh, good. I gave birth. I was not ready for this. I now have to abandon the child. Seen my parents. I probably just killed them in a cave back there. You can go look for the corpse if you want. They told me to stay here with the others. They said to be back soon, but it's been days. And they left with the man from Uldah. The man said they were going to change everything, make it so we could live inside the walls with everyone else. I liked it when he said that. I don't like it when he talked about making the rich people pay. Everyone looks so angry, and I get scared. Miss, are you looking for someone? <sighs> I'm looking for the merchant. You mean the man who left my parents? I don't know where he... Look, over there. That's him. Which of these gullible fools should be my next victim? You're gonna burn in hell. Go get him. I really like the music that this mount comes with. I can't place it, but I really like it. Confess it in part sounds sort of like a, a weird cross between Dragon Quest and Pokemon music. Why are you pursuing me? Sedition? Treason? Revolution? No, those preposterous. 
This what you had with these lies. Refugees, and so certain refugees who terrorized the streets of Bulda. Huh. You have no evidence to prove your accusations. None. No, I will not accompany you to the Hall of Flames. You have no right to detain me. What's that fucking asking? Just about the sale. Like, as a wee bit like Pokemon, it's like Pokemon if it was done in the cadence of a Dragon Quest game. For the sake of armor, let's say I did the things you claim. Surely, you don't think I'd give a Kikarin's arse about politics? It was business, only business. You don't fit with fuck with big woman. We both know I'm the money one. However, if you agree to protect me, I swear I shall tell you everything. Arrow in the neck, in the neck, arrow in the neck. Yeah, it was close. All the commotion. Tell the others to spread out and search the other killer. The killer may still be close. Whole adventure. I'll know more about your relationship with the victim as well as the events that led to his death. Man was responsible for the recent riots. May help you owe his murderer a debt of gratitude. In any case, it's obvious you're not the one whom we seek. You may carry on with your investigation, Sion. Were you honestly thinking you were going to day if I was the one that killed him? Like, honestly, it's so close to a Pokemon theme, I wouldn't be surprised if it is some kind of Pokemon reference, but all these mounts are either taken from this game itself or from other Final Fantasies, right? So I kind of have to wonder where that particular bit of music is from. I just can't place it and it's driving me mental. What news, Dermot? Where's the merchant? Deed. Murdered? Dermot to the seventh hell. He was not simply murdered, he was silenced. Too many knew his face, and he was ready to divulge his secrets. Do not despair, though. You will be closer to identifying the true orchestrator of these riots than you realise. I should maybe grab some casting gear, actually. There is none available. Good to know. Flame Journal left word for you that we... that you were to proceed to the fragrant chamber as soon as you returned. You wish to discuss your recent discoveries as well as a result of your own investigation. Master Alfano has already been informed through waiting for you outside. Pray proceed to the Royal Promenade with all haste and speak to Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Oops. I know I'm not moving any faster than usual, but see, because I'm an absolute giant of a woman, I feel like I'm moving quicker and everything. Like, I'm too used to looking at Rogue Aidens and having to look up at them. Now I'm literally looking down at them. I was always the third shortest member of the Scions that wasn't a Lalafell. And the only two younger than me are literal children. <laughs> that were smaller, sorry. On jam. And this one, it's like, hey, Yalfa, no. Look, if I stand in a certain way, I wouldn't be able to see you from my character's boobs. We've been expecting you, madam. Please proceed inside. Mm. I'll take it. Commander.
Commander Swift has kept us apprised of your recent activities. You've made great strides towards quelling the violence. Despite our best efforts to determine what provoked this uprising, the truth continues to elude us. Have you uncovered aught which might shed some light on the mystery? This information does not leave this room. The Syndicate's decision to reject the Dorman refugees' appeal for asylum had lasting repercussions. A number of those displaced by the Calamity claimed it was proof of a policy of discrimination. Together with a group of Olive Megan refugees, they organized a series of demonstrations to protest against the Sultanate. Demonstrations which became heated, but did not descend into violence. Until a certain incident served as a call to arms. A unit of brass blades sent to supervise a demonstration loosed arrows upon unarmed protesters. It was this atrocity which prompted the refugees to take up arms. I need not tell you what followed. We assumed at first that the attack was born of a miscommunication. When emotions run high, they happen. But suspicions were raised regarding the unit's commanding officer, whom I ordered interrogated. Sure enough, our fears were soon confirmed. The dog confessed that a merchant had offered him coin to give the order. A merchant in the employ of Teleji Adeleji. Teleji Adeleji? But he spoke in favor of the Doman's cause, and has ever seemed sympathetic towards the refugees' plight. Why would he do such a... Know you of the Cartano Reclamation Bill? It is a proposal to annex the Cartano Flats so that refugees may establish permanent settlements. When last I looked, was disputed territory. Aye. Some might even call it a battlefield. Did you get it? Because it's a PvP arena. The destruction wrought by Bahamut was greatest at the Cartano Flats. That much is common knowledge. What is less well known is that his rampage laid bare ancient Alagon ruins. Of which no record existed. There are certain differences of opinion as to how these ruins should be handled, which is why each nation maintains a military presence in the region to this day. Yet differ though we may, we are still allies. Therefore, in the interest of preserving the Aeorzean alliance, we have reached an agreement. Any conflict which may arise during the course of military exercises in the region shall have no bearing on relations between our nations. In full knowledge of this delicate state of affairs, Teleji Adeleji proposed the Cartano Reclamation Bill, a shameless bloody ruse which stands to benefit him in but one conceivable way. If successful, he will gain control over the disputed territory under the guise of assisting in the resettlement effort. And you can be sure he'll build an orphanage next to every Alagon ruin. The man would threaten the unity of the Aeorzean Alliance and risk countless lives for personal gain. He walks a path all his own. Independent of any faction, and beholden to none of his fellows on the Syndicate. By inciting the less fortunate to violence, he hopes to convince others that the Cartano Reclamation Bill is the only viable solution. His sympathy for the plight of the Domans was not but posturing to gain credibility with the refugees. Of that there can be no doubt. Forgive me, but what could possibly motivate Teleji Adeleji to go to such lengths? What is so special about these ruins that he would risk his position on the Syndicate and, most likely, charges of treason against the Sultanate? Omega. Pardon? An 
Polygon monstrosity, not unlike the Ultima weapon. Mayhap larger, we know not. It has yet to be fully excavated. Polygon inscriptions indicate that it was created to fell Bahamut himself. If accurate, it might explain why Nail Bandanus chose to bring the Red Moon down upon the Cotino Flats. Given the ends he went to to ensure Eorzea's annihilation, destroying the one weapon which could stay the Elder Primal may well have seemed like good sense. When first I bore witness to the power of the Ultima weapon, I doubted the evidence of my senses. And now you tell me there is another such weapon, one which could contend with Bahamut. Bahamut! I didn't know Omega was mentioned this early in the story. That was really cool. Aye, we were skeptical ourselves. Truth be told, until the Ultima weapon's existence came to light, we thought the inscription had been mistranslated. At present, Omega is more akin to a fossil than a tool of war, having long since ceased to function. As such, its true potential cannot accurately be gauged. However, if someone were to restore it, as the Carleans did the Ultima weapon, I have little doubt that he would wield untold power. Power enough to subjugate Uldar like as not, and the rest of Eorzea besides, which is doubtless why Telegi Adelegi yearns to have it. That he should aspire to world domination. He who has ever walked two paces behind Lord Lolorito in matters of commerce. Tis in acknowledgement of his own limitations that he seeks this power. Woe betide us all should we allow him to have it. Pray waste no time chasing rats. Only a fool would believe that secrets can be kept in Uldar. It would seem the implications of the Sultanate's refugee problem are rather more far-reaching than we assumed. I should be glad to know the truth, and yet, the thought that, this all, that all this chaos was a product of one man's lust for power sickens me. How long do you think they intend to hide the existence of Omega from the Scions? That they even felt the need to do so is most troubling. It would be in our best interest to learn more of the military activities in the distrib disputed territories. Fortunately, we are already well positioned to do so. Lieutenant Dina, please keep us informed of any developments in Gartner. You're going well, but this is no place for children. I was looking for you, you said you were looking for the man who left with my parents. So you bet did stones throw as well, I see. Did you find a man or my parents with him? They were not, I'm afraid. However, I can think of several places places they might be. If you like, we can go and look for them together. Really? You help me look? Of course, but first, I must need to finish speaking with my friend. She's telling me a secret, you see, so no one else is allowed to listen. I hope you could wait for me by the pillow over there. We require but a moment. Take of the quicksand, we have moment he will know what to do. A legion of Garleans and an of Star Primal. Even dealing with an Asian would be preferable to this charade. Sometimes I fear Menphilia is too ambitious. We rush hither and you We rush hither and you in response to threats as they arise, without concern for the strain it places on our limited resources and ourselves. Yep, the time has come for change. Dermot, it. it's Minfilia, and all of a sudden, I must act your return revenant's toll with all due haste. The situation in 12 was taking a turn for worse. I'll explain in detail once you arrive. Twelveswood, the primal threat should 
she spoke of before has been confirmed. I received no reports of exile activity, which leaves the Sylphs. Go, Dermot. You know as well as I, the appearance of a primal take precedent over all else. Go. And when you arrive, do inform the antecedent that while I am grateful for her concern, she needn't fear for my safety. I am more than capable of protecting myself. Are ye? I. I'd give you a wee bit of boop window. Zoom in there, beef. Is there more blue quests appeared here? Hmm. Wow. I have to get by me, bitch. I wouldn't even see you through the helmet. Jeez. I'm a huge bitch. I now suddenly realise why it feels like everything in Eorzea was gigantic. Right, I always felt the doors were really, really oversized, but see now that I'm playing a tall character, I kind of get it. They're not tall, I've just always been playing a very short character. Like Jam is height-wise with Stola. <laughs> oh dear, dear oh dear oh dear. See you healing. Uh, healthy and heal, dermot. This news from Uldao is most disturbing. Clearly, the only injury Alfred was suffered was to his ego. Doubtless, it will heal ere long. The only scions, the other scions, will need to be present at this meeting. If you're ready to begin, I'll summon him now. Thank you for responding to my call with such haste. Rest assured, I would not have summoned you were it not urgent. To business then, I received some of the most disturbing news from the Order of the Twin Adder. The reason to believe the Silts may have to call for their revered guardian, the Primal Ramu. I'm sorry, may have? Then it's not certain. The Elder Seeds there informed us that the elements themselves murmur of the Lord of Levin's return to the forest. The Silphlands, however, displayed no signs of undue commotion. Forgive me, Antecedent, but the fact need not contradict the Elemental's testimony. Unlike his more bellicose compeers, Garuda and so on, Ramu is reputed to act only in defence of his children. I imagine he would soon make his presence known if any were foolish enough to directly endanger the Silphs of their territory. The of this development concerns me. We were not keeping a close watch on the Touched Ones and their movement. Were we not keeping a watch on the Touched Ones and all their movement? If preparation for summoning ritual were indeed underway, it would surely not have escaped your notice. Oh, it didn't. Pretty sure it was going to happen, just not this soon. I beg your pardon, you foresaw this eventuality and did not prevent it. I told Papa Leo, I suppose I could have reported things to Minfilia early. There honestly wasn't much we could do except to wait and see. You know how the cells feel about people poking around in their territory. They already summoned Ramu once, right after the Calamity, but that was because Garleans came ramp tramping through the forest. And so long as Castrum Orion stands, the Sylphs cannot be blamed for wishing to have their guardian deity on hand. In short, Ida and I are in agreement. The action of the forest folk were inevitable and unavoidable. maintained that observation would have remained the best policy had it not been for the sudden influx of strangers to the Black Shroud. That, alas, we did not foresee. By all accounts, the recent violence in Ulda and the number of refugees seek safety under the concealing canopy of trees. Just like the Sills perceived this panicked migration as yet another invasion and quickened their efforts to summon the god. 
I am put in mind that Titan and the Kobolds, once again, it's the affairs of men which have paved the way for Primal's coming. Indeed, one cannot help but wonder what manner of place yours would be without the civilizing influence of mankind. Be that as it may, this regrettable development does afford us a unique opportunity. Dermot, through your dealings with the Sylphs of Little Solace, you once succeeded in preventing an untimely conflict with Gradania. I wonder, might one who has treated with the Sylphs so fretfully in the past not achieve similar success with their patron deity? If Ramo can be convinced of her intentions, it may be the first step to breaking the cycle of primal summoning. A fond hope. Were such a thing possible, we would not have been at war with the Beastmen such since time immemorial. Maybe this time we can. Let's continue the discussion and on. You must needs first consult with the nation most affected by Rama's presence. I will see Terra's requested personal involvement, dear. Pray report to Commander High Roll in the Adder's Nest as soon as you're able. Steal yourself for the worst. While I hope for a peaceful resolution in this matter, experience suggests that your meeting with the Lord of Levin will prove less than amicable. In such an event, your fellow signs will of course lend whatever support you require. I require you for a cough. <laughs> Normally when I sit like this, I'm gouged back quite a bit, right? I move my headset in such a way that just make sure my mute button is inside. It always just slides off my body and falls to the side. But I'm so sweaty that it's just not moving on my body. It's as if it's stuck to my abdomen. Not my abdomen. My... Back between my... Belly and my ribs. Solar plexus. It's literally just stuck there, unmoving. The arrival has been most anticipated. The appearance of the Primal is ever a cause for alarm and unease. Though my men stand ready for any eventuality, I know of none more qualified than you to snuff out this threat. Indeed, I would have you do so without delay. The other seats, however, will speak to you first. She's of the opinion that your diplomatic, rather than martial skills, may better serve her cause. I would leave further explanation to our learned leader. Premier Great and Ophika's altar. The conjurer in attendance will admit you to the lotus stand. Man, out of the three city states, the only ones we've yet to meet so far is. It's literally just them slimmings, isn't it? Lim Lane? Yeah. Not the time, Gordon. Not the time. It's kind of weird seeing Madam. It was the first time I played a female character. Hello. of the seventh dawn on behalf of the people of Gradania, I bid you welcome your presence is of great comfort to us all in these days of uncertainty I summoned you here to share tidings of a most urgent nature but a short while ago the great elemental spoke and his voice was clarion in its intensity Ramu is returned unto the forest Scarce had his words ceased to echo in mine ears when we were visited by an emissary from Little Solace. Our guest informs us that the Sylphs, too, have sensed the presence of the Lord of Levin. Do you think if you grabbed the Sylph by the head and just took a big bite out of its forehead it would taste like lettuce? Though his exact whereabouts remain unknown, we may safely assume that the Primal was summoned within the heart of the Sylphlings. Unlike the other Primals you have encountered, 
Lord Ramu is no raging avatar of destruction. He is revered as much for his wisdom as his strength, serving as both arbiter and guardian to his children. Given that we and the Sylphs found a way to share the Twelve's Wood, it is my hope that this sagely immortal will be amenable to reason, and that conflict may be avoided. Blessed as you are with the power of the Echo, you are one of the few among us who may commune with a primal without fear of influence. I would ask, therefore, that you represent us in this most delicate of negotiations. The Twelve's Wood has suffered enough. Upon this, we and the Sylphs, and I would venture Lord Ramu himself, are in perfect accord. Let us not endanger our shared home by engaging in unnecessary hostilities. Dear friend, I beseech you, safeguard the peace which exists between our peoples. You have my thanks. Pray make for little solace then. A member of the Order of the Twin Adder awaits you there. He will advise you on how to find the Lord of Levin. An ill wind blows through the forest. Sorry, I had kebab. It is not only the Twelve's Wood that flinches at its coming. All the lands of Eorzea shiver in dread anticipation. Have care. Aware of the signs, I was told to expect you. I understand you're to treat with the primal Ramu, sir, um, himself. An unenviable task, but one which I have no doubt you are well suited. It has been told that your fellow signs are conducting an investigation of the area as we speak, that we might ascertain the location where Lord Eleven may be found. I would ask you to abide here until they return with their findings. Oh. That's a really cool thumbnail for this quest. I was told that a message would be sent as soon as your fellow science finished the investigation. I do not imagine it would be much longer. This one returns, returns with good tidings. Wise ones have finished searching and have wisely identified the precise location where the touched ones summoned Lord Rama. The timing is impeccable. My philosopher friend, might you be so kind as to escort our good woman to the fellow signs? It would be this one's pleasure, walking one. Please, come with this one. I'm gonna serve your head with bacon and tomato on bread. Crunchy self lettuce. Seals are doing a watch. Well, a YouTube channel I watch, Mythical Kitchen, and every now and again they put out shorts. That's one of the chefs on it, uh, Josh, talking about what Pokemon he would eat and how he would prepare them to eat. I think he'd have a field day with this game. These ones have ventured deep, deep within the Southlands. These ones must be too carefully, keep an eye out for touched ones. Sorry, but this one can go no further. 
draw too close to Lord Ramu, this one may turn mean and nasty like the touched ones. And so this one must save forever for now. Walking one will find the wise ones not far from here. To the south. That's south, okay. That was basically west, you bastard. So it's actually you. I'm relieved. For a moment, I thought we were dealing with another one of those confounded self tricksters. I swear. With them wreaking havoc and their skin changing magics, it's a wonder I was able to finish taking my measure measurements. Yes, this was quite the ordeal. You should have seen the look on Yustola's face when one impersonating you suddenly showed up. Quite enough, Papa Limo. My apologies. Not like me to ramble, so go to guys up. <sighs> At any rate, as I was saying, I have finished measuring the etheric activity in the area, and I'm pleased to say I have reached an indisputable conclusion to wit. Uh, a conclusion to wit that Ramu was called forth in the vicinity of the cell's etherite. Come damn it, Lord of Leaven awaits. Who <laughs> would have thought the cell summoned him? In the same place, all the other fuckers summoned them. Boggles the mind. You're so fucking cool. Thou art the bringer of light, bane of Ifrit, Titan, Garuda, and Leviathan. I am Ramu, guardian of the children of the forest. Thou tramplest upon sacred soil, bringer of light. By what right doth man intrude in this sanctuary of the sylphs? The Gridanians proffer peace? Their words are born of delusion, thine offer an insult. Thou speakest of harm. Yet carest not for my children's desires. They did but wish to dwell beneath these bows in solitude. Yet even that was too much to ask of man. Thus did they turn to me for succor. The sentence I pronounce upon thy kind is just. Redanian or Garlean, it matters not. The good intent of one excuseth not the misdeeds of the other. Thy conflicts have brought naught but anguish and misery unto the forest. All blame doth lie with the darkness that resideth in the breast of man. Whence sprung this calamitous seed? In the beginning no such duality existed. Were light and dark given form when man was born? It would explain much. Not least why strife and sorrow follow ever in thy wake. Thou canst not deny the urgings of thine own nature. Knowing that thy mere presence here portended tragedy, wilt thou persist in this pretense of peacemaking? E. Thou bearest the crystal which I bestowed upon thy wayward charges. That they should entrust so precious a gift to thee. Thou standest apart from thy kin. Thou art the bringer of light. I. There is something more in thee. Very well. I shall consider thy proposal. Shouldst thou survive my trial. 
If thou wouldst champion the cause of harmony, I must have proof that thou art fit to play the role. Whether mine eye, and prove to me thereby that thou hast strength enough to stay the darkness which threateneth to consume thee. Yet if thou shouldst be found wanting, Know that all men shall perish in the storm of my judgment. Come to me, bringer of light. I shall await thee on the field of battle. Urianger, it is rare indeed to find you so far from a tome. The Lord of Levin himself. Never till this day had I looked upon his visage, save in painted renderings made faint by time. Never shall this scene remain etched in my mind's eye. <clears throat> Beg pardon, my lady. I must beg thine aid on a point of research. If thou art resolved to face Lord Ramu, I would ask thy leave to observe the event. The striking tree. I, you know the drill, beefy. Are you about? Yep, can be. Ah, sweet. If you don't mind, just let me punch Ram out of the tits. I'll go to the end of this kind of quest line bit and then I'll call it for the night. have to say again, I did not know that was what the sequence of events leads up to you fighting Rami was. That is cool as fuck. I don't know how anybody could have got bored doing this stuff. It was just that wee finicky bit as it was before that drove me insane. And I ended up skipping this entire storyline stuff and like, in hindsight, I regret it. I regret skipping to Heavensward. I genuinely do. This has been a genuine valuable experience for me. Oh, that didn't he pop up that you came online. Invite, invite to party. Do, 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 do. Twile. The striking twee. Let's poke an old man. Hmm. Wait. No. No. Behave yourself, Beef. God, I love Rama so much as well.
God dang it. Cheers, beefy. Judge thee a worthy champion. The task of exciting the sin that hath taken root in man's heart is thine. Shrink not from employing thy strength in service to the forest and the wider realm beyond. Like hungering shadows do the enemies of harmony gather, and meekness will but feed. If man is to be delivered from the dark, it shall be by thy guiding light alone. Stray not from the path, for if thou dost, thy people shall be truly lost. Thou hast slain the Lord of Levin, a regrettable act. A necessary one. In witnessing thy struggle, the truth hath been revealed unto me. If I mistake not, it may yet prove a chink in the eternal armor of the Asians. But let us conclude our present business. I shall expound upon my findings at the Rising Stones anon. Man, it is so much better being able to wear a helmet as a dragoon. You really aren't playing a dragoon unless you're like armed to the teeth. So good. No, no, I'm just going to Nami. Did I ask how Ramu received your visit? Violently. He challenged you to a test of arms. It is well then, do you have some experience on such matters? Peoples of both Gridania and Little Souls will be relieved to hear that the Lord of Levin has accepted you as the Forest Champion of Peace. You have performed a monumental duty this day, Dermot. The elder seats there must be informed of your deeds at once. Oh, come on, can I just. I need to go to Rising Stones. The elder seats there wish to hear the experience of first hand. We'll return to Gridania. Then to Rising Stones. At G4. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like how the first thing I've seen as soon as I zone into Gridania is I think she's dead. Righty oh. -ho. Welcome back, Honored Sion. We knew of your mission, and have been most anxious to see you return. Elder Seed Sarah awaits you within. How tall am I compared to Kanisena? Because she's one of the shortest leaders, isn't she? Besides an animal. Yeah, we're about the same, same height as everyone else, I guess. You are returned to us, dear friend. And none the worse for bearing the heavy burden which I did press upon you. 
Most glad am I of this. I am informed that your efforts to negotiate a peace with Lord Ramu ended in conflict. Pray tell me, what befell? Ramu made trial of you? I fear there is truth to his claim. It is the darkness within us that attracts the darkness without. It cannot be denied that misfortune follows man. For evidence, one need only look to the conflict brewing in Cartanel, or to the rising flood of refugees. Our shared struggle against the Empire should have served to seal our union. Yet the ties which bind the Alliance strain under the weight of gross self-interest. As the scars of the Calamity begin to fade, so too does our sense of common purpose. Yet now is scarce the time to forget our shared responsibility. If this new sprung realm is to survive beyond its infancy, it must needs be nurtured by all. Eorzea must be as one. Yet I fear that dream is still far off. On behalf of the people of Redania, and the Elementals both, I thank you for all that you and your fellow Scions have done. Full oft have I been compelled to look to you for aid of late, and offer it all too little in return. As leader of this nation, I shall endeavor to prove a more worthy ally to your cause henceforth. Lord Ramu has departed, yet the keening of this ill wind grows no less insistent. Voices of the forest, pray speak and I shall listen. What unseen evil begets this unease in my heart? Diarrhea. Lord Ramu could be persuaded with words alone, but nonetheless, I can only admire the adroitness with which you responded to the prime of sudden challenge. It seems that Rianja too was pleased with the outcome. Let's see you, Dermot. Should we gallop rising stones? Why would turn to the rising stones? Back, what of your momentous encounter with the Lord Ramu procedure? I would fain share news of my own, but to Ganges discoveries may take, must take precedence. When witnessing your defeat of Lord Eleven, our learned companion was struck with a profound insight regarding the nature of the Asian's immortality. Let us assemble to discuss his observations together. Go on, hurry up. Is ready, let us begin. Dorianger, the floor is yours. As all here assembled now know, in its final hours as our order's headquarters, the Waking Sands did play host to a most unexpected visitor. I speak of the Asian clad in white, Elidibus. Unwelcome though his presence was, his words that day did serve to confirm a truth long suspected. 
that the Asians are eternal beings to whom physical destruction is as a temporary inconvenience. In the intervening time, Ariange and I have striven to discover a means by which the Asians might more permanently be slain. And tis my belief that we have found the thread that will allow us to unravel the twisted skein of their existence. In the moments prior to Leviathan's most recent manifestation, the Sahagin elder who summoned him was observed to undergo some manner of ascension. The etheric readings taken by Yashtola at the time of this transfiguration have proven most enlightening. The disruption to the flow of ether was sudden and dramatic. So tangible was the agitation, I scarce had need of my goggles. The significance of Yashtola's readings might better be understood in the context of mine own, taken at the instant of the Lord of Levin's demise. Unlike the primal, the Sahagin was not subject to etheric dissipation. Before discussing our new discoveries, it may benefit us all to recall what we know of etheric behavior. Let us begin at what some might call the end. When we who dwell in the material realm die, our spirits dissolve into the flow of ether and are returned to the ethereal realm. In turn, the restless energy which suffuses that plane streams back into our world, giving rise to new life. Tis as the heavens did decree, the way of all mortal souls. Twixt this world and the next do the ethereal current swirl, bearing the very essence of life. Thus doth the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth continue unabated. Primals behave somewhat differently. In order to manifest and then maintain a physical presence in this realm, they must consume vast quantities of ether, most often in the form of crystals. Though they may seem to live, their flesh is but ether given shape. Thus, a defeated primal leaves behind no broken corpse. Rather, the essence of its form seeps back into the land whence it came, and the energy of its shattered spirit is called back to the ethereal realm. And there it waiteth till next the prayers of the faithful do draw it forth from the sea of ether to take their offering of crystals and make for itself a new body. Which brings us on to the third group, the so-called immortals. They exist in a manner all their own. Quite. Even as the Sahagin Elder fell to the Admiral's musket shot, I witnessed the release of an ethereal cloud, which immediately took possession of a nearby minion. A soul that dissipateth not upon the death of the flesh. The secret of life everlasting, and in the claws of a Sahagin no less. But I wonder, what would happen to one of these obstinate spirits, should there be no suitable host for it to claim? If mortal death entailed a return to the ethereal realm, it seems doubtful that the soul of an immortal would venture there. Nay, it merely withdraweth the distance, unto the shore of the ethereal sea, perchance, but no further. Yes, it exists in neither this realm nor the next, abiding instead in the space that lies between them. The Asians took control of Thancred by means of a crystal of darkness, an artifact which, if our theories are correct, serves as a gateway to the place I have just described. I was hoping people had forgotten about that. I am sorry, my friend. For a mercy, the weary road of our research hath brought us unto an answer. The Sahagan ascended to an immortal state but he did not possess a crystal of darkness through which to flee this realm. Thus was he consumed by Leviathan. 
If we could entrap the spirits of defeated Asians in like manner, and thereby deny them resurrection... Therein lieth the path to victory. Thou art most perceptive, my lady. Only when we have trapped the bodiless soul within an ethereal prison can we hope to defeat its unnatural constancy. Thus might even an eternal paragon be consigned to oblivion. These feats are, of course, far easier said than done. At present, we lack a viable means to entrap and extinguish an Asian soul. Yet, I believe it to be possible. The pieces of the puzzle lie before us. We have but to put them together. I will depart at once to convene with the sages of Charlian. Together shall we divine the steps by which our goals may be achieved. I have the utmost faith in you, Archon. Beg pardon, Antecedent, but I would raise one final matter. Even now, a Charlian survey party seeketh to ascertain the fate of the students of Baldessian. Their findings shall soon be known to us. Though you harbor feelings of dread, I bid you surrender not to sorrow, but abide instead in hopeful prayer. I shall, Archon. Thank you. Lord of Levin has returned to the ether, as was Leviathan before him. Ramu... Ramu's acquiescence was most intriguing. Infernal Vortex, Crag, Warl and Levin. All now have been humbled by the bringer of light. Limitless potential of man, Heiklund's servant grows mightier by the day. Yet she prospers at great cost. Yet she prospers at great cost to her mistress. Fuck. I, I forgot I was a female again. I was getting confused who that was talking about. <laughs> Whose strength is all too finite. Seven times have the masses survived the rejoining, but their souls have grown weak and wane. Yet even as it enervates, it harder empowers our master. All that remains is to nurture the strength of the gifted to forge the final key. And that's the task to which we bend our every effort. Divine seeds were ever want to quicken an Eorzea's fertile soil, soil. We need only lead men to the field, and by their eager hands shall a new deity arise. Which shattered shall be made anew, and one true God shall come again. has, for the present, been put to rest with something I would show you. A letter of thanks signed by the leaders of the Orzea and the Lions, acknowledging the Sion, Sion's tireless service to the realm. It mentions in particular the names of all the defeated primals, Efrit, Titan, Garuda, Good King Malgamog XII, Le Leviathan, and now Ramu. Needless to say, there's only one among our number to have faced them all. 
though these words of gratitude were addressed to our order as a whole, I feel they were meant for you above all others. I too must offer my heartfelt thanks for all you have done. In the course of your duties, you have never once failed to answer my call to arms. You're a true hero, Demon. And Iorza is much safer for your presence. Pray do not misunderstand me. I said safer, not safe. I know only too well we can ill afford to lower our guard. The Asians may be relied upon to sow chaos in this realm to such times they're forced to stop. Is it? I don't see it. That's actually just the armor, bruh. Gabe Olg actually stops. Because it all goes to the side. I'll, I'll, I'll go in a 3D view once I come off. Like, even without that encouragement, you may rest assured that man would ferment strife on his own. That's to say nothing of the beast tribes, unless we learn to live in harmony. The primals too will return to plague us again, 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 again. And yet, despite all of this, your deeds serve to inspire the people, to give them hope for a better tomorrow. And there is no greater gift. That we have courage to strive for what might otherwise seem an impossible peace. We owe in no small part to the dangers you have faced on our behalf. And the people you have won over to our cause in doing, in so doing list of enemies has been lo has ever been long think of the allies with whom we are now blessed now nah, I'm looking at it that's just the spikes that come off of the the armor because because I've got it at such a high sp uh, high stage my gibbon is completely different colored from my armor now there's nay of its spikes coming through it, it's actually just the armor itself. I'll show you again. Look, what's it got? Of the cells of Little Solace, who wish none of conflict. Of the Alamegans and the Domans who stand with us, determined to halt the dread march of the Empire. And then there is Sid and his fellowship of Noah, racing to unlock the mysteries of ancient Alag, that we might be spared the horror of another Ultima weapon. Of course, when speaking of our greatest allies, we must not forget those closest to us, by which I mean our fellow scions. Thanks to the many very many and varied talents, our order is uniquely equipped to combat the far reaching corruption of the Asians. And combat it we shall. Your enthusiasm is truly heartwarming and distant. Given our embarrassing wealth of allies, I trust that it will not inconvenience you unduly if I absent myself for a time. I don't know, we'll take troubles and all that, no longer require attention. There are yet some rumblings of discontent, but there is the air of simmering violence is largely dissipated. It is the report that I stand before you now. That and to speak you concern a new organization we discussed. Ah, uh, I have a message to you from Ellie. <clears throat> you recall the refugee girl? One whose parents went missing. They were found unharmed. Trust me to pass her thanks to you. My Alfano, am I to understand you made effort to remember the poor girl's name? I look forward to reading all about her in your report. I do hope you left nothing out. Dermot, you have been away from Revenant's Toll for some time now, I believe. Might I suggest you put affairs and realm to one side for a moment, take this opportunity to reacquaint yourself with the town? Which reminds me, one of the Dolman children recently inquired to your whereabouts. Yozan was his name. I believe he has some small matter he wishes to share with you. Why not oblige him with a visit? When last you seen me, I was rabbit. Now, I am large. Oh, we actually need that to go away, don't we? So, look, you can see... That's actually just the way the armor is. On a female character. The spikes that come through. I take it it was this bit you were talking about. The sharp bit here, right? Because that is legit just part of the armor. See? You 
and when it's drawn, you can see that it's there. There's a slight random bit, of, a tiny bit of clipping from one of the shoulder spikes to where it rests, but it's only because of the way my character breathes. And it's really not well. There is one. It's actually right there, glaringly in my face. But that's not. To be honest, weapons float on your back in this, so it's not really that much of a problem to me. When I've got it all drawn. But yeah, the random spikes always been there. It's less prominent on the the male's armor for some reason. So fuck knows. And again, I don't think the male's armor has a tummy window either. So, oh, I forgot I had a face under that. But yeah, worry not, it's not the gay bulk. But for now, I'm going to patch it and maybe the more I'll see where I'm at. I'll continue on with this and hopefully be able to get to the point of Snowcloak. Anime bros, catch you later. Nighty night.